following is a presentation of WLRN Public Television. The ocean is an incredible place. Let's keep it that way. Join us as we hunt for sustainable seafood. Our seafood choices matter for the future of ocean health. Hey, it's Sarah Curry from Soraya Films. In this episode, I'm visiting a fish farm that's growing pompano on land. Pompano is a common fish in the southeast, but in recent years, there haven't been enough wild pompano to meet the demand. When you look out and see an endless expanse of water, it's easy to assume there will always be fish in the ocean. Fifteen years ago, I worked on commercial fishing boats and heard stories of the boats being heavy with fish. I never witnessed that abundance when I was on the water. And since then, I've spent time learning about how seafood is caught and how it's grown. There are more people than ever wanting access to good seafood. And luckily, there are folks here in Florida working to make that happen. In addition to fishermen here, there are fish farmers who know that the fish don't sleep when they go home, who know that in order to succeed, they need resilience, innovation, and determination. This type of aquaculture, recirculating aquaculture, whether it's pompano, whether it's salmon, or whatever species is, is new, right? And I think the phrase I like to use is persistence pays, right? It, it, it takes time, it takes money, and it takes a lot of patience. This is our uh, current broodstock systems, where we are housing two tanks in two independent recirculating aquaculture systems. There has been a, a giant influx, especially in the US, of RAS producers that have jumped into the space because it's kind of like the last frontier in aquaculture, right? Companies have proven that cage farming works and it is profitable, and this is the next I'd say not final, but the next frontier, right? And so these are your original uh, yeah. Wild yeah. Here. These are these are our wild collection. There's about 60 fish between the two tanks, and these are all wild wild stock collected locally. And uh, yeah, these will be our brood for the next several years while we work on getting our first generation fish selected. Broodstock are a group of fish that are used for breeding purposes. These fish will spawn the eggs, providing baby fish for the farm. In the wild, fish use different environmental cues to know when to spawn. Farms use a combination of techniques to recreate these same conditions while inducing spawning when necessary. When we need to ask them for more eggs, we have to typically give them a time-release pellet, which is just a hormone that is naturally occurring in them, and we facilitate that and basically speed that process up which has its advantages because we can pick which parents we want. We can make groups of fish, which for us, when we're developing a breeding program is super important. Once the eggs are produced, they come here to the hatchery. We're meeting up with Fab, who's been raising baby pompano for about 20 years. He's developed new techniques important to this delicate part of the fish's life. Getting consistent results requires a very specialized skill set. So this is our brand new hatchery. It will be fully integrated from source all the way out the door to the restaurant. So uh, broodstock produces our eggs. Our eggs come here. We raise the fingerlings here. And from here, they go to the grow out operation right next door. So once the eggs come through the door, what happens? All right, so once the eggs come through the door, it takes them about uh, 18 to 24 hours to hatch and then once they hatch it takes them another 
two days before they start feeding. So they rely on the yolk sac in those, in those two days. And during that time, they're developing their mouth parts and their eyes. Once the mouth parts and the eyes are developed, they open their mouths, now they can start feeding. That's when we introduce the live prey for them to feed. The first feed the baby pompano eat are rotifers, essentially microscopic insects. Fab grows these on site. When the baby pompano outgrow the rotifers, Fab moves them up to Artemia, or brine shrimp. After that, we will start weaning them onto dry feeds, and that's basically your, uh, your pellets. And once they're weaned, they're ready to go next door to the grow out part of the operation. For us, having a species that could be egg to harvest in 10 months or so is really appealing because you know that's less than half the time for a salmon for example and that just in terms of a de-risking strategy or that was really appealing we can get the fish in and get them out as fast as we can so this half of the building is our nursery system uh, this is where we keep all of our smaller fish we receive them at about a half gram size and they'll spend about five months over here. How big uh, is that? Uh, half a gram is uh, maybe like a half inch or so. Okay. But they grow extremely quick. I mean, within two or three weeks, they're already three, four times as big as they are when we get them here. So how often do you guys feed them? Uh, we feed everything four times a day. Okay. And all our feeding rates are calculated based on how many fish we have in the tank. So and how do you figure that out? Uh, we keep track of them as we bring them into the building. We know how many fish we have. And throughout the process, we do weekly sampling. So we'll go into the tanks, take some fish out, get average weights, and we can see how the tank is broken down. They're bubbling a little in that. Do they know that you're yeah. they're oh, they're hungry. Yeah, they're always hungry. So oh, cool. four times a day they eat. They would eat all day if we fed them. Um, but cool. they're, they're ready to go right now. Should we feed some? Yeah, let's do it. I think they're ready. OK. Right now it's important to hand feed them because you can tell a lot just by having people up here. You know, you can read the fish's behavior, tell if you're overfeeding them or underfeeding. So at a scale like this, you know, it's good to always have eyes on things. But as we move forward, everything can be automated. You know, the more data we collect, we're more comfortable with doing things that way. What other behaviors are you looking for when you're, you know? Uh, the biggest thing is, you know, make sure those fish are happy, healthy, and they're gonna wanna eat. If, if the fish are hungry like this, they come right up then everything's going well um, you know we luckily we haven't had any issues here uh, the fish have been great but a lot of that you know is a testament to how careful we are with biosecurity our filtration methods really everything we do in this system just to give the fish the ideal place to survive the systems allow us to recycle a large percentage of water that we use anywhere from 90 to 99 percent depending on the stage of growth which from a sustainability standpoint means we have a lower footprint um, as opposed to an operation that may just bring water in, filter it, and pump water out. We take all our water from a lagoon out back and from there it goes through what we call primary filtration. So first we take out any solids that might be in the water and then we hit it with ozone which basically kills any viruses or things like that that might be present in the water. From there, comes into the building and goes through a whole other bank of filtration. In a recirculating system, the water is constantly moving, continuously being cleaned and reused. When the water leaves a tank, the solids are removed by drum filters. This mechanical filtration removes the larger solids, and from there, the water goes to the main sump. It then goes to a degassing column that removes the carbon dioxide from the water, and finally it goes through the biofilter. So there's a bunch of bacteria, two types of bacteria, in all this media on there. It's basically surface area that they can live on, and they work, they, they feed off the fish waste and break it down into a less toxic form. I would say the most important part of the filtration wow. is that biofilter right there. After the water is cleaned, liquid oxygen is added and it goes back into the tanks. The water makes its way through the system two or three times an hour. Each part of the farm has its own independent system, which is another way the farm manages risk. Recirculating farms can be set up in slightly different ways, but in all systems, proper water management is paramount. We wanna be as sustainable as we can and, and we think that growing fish in recirculating systems is, 
is the you know closest we've gotten so far. But it does have its own challenges. It's a power hungry type of operation. And as we find better ways to do this, we become more efficient. We find ways to build the systems that use less energy that can work with stuff like, you know, renewable energy that can offset some of that. We are in the grow out area of Aquaco, and this is the final stage of our production cycle. I mean, they spend four or five months here um, getting, getting ready to be harvested. And so what other maintenance, daily maintenance goes on with these sinks? A lot of the work that we do is making sure that the system is operating properly. And as long as the system's operating, then the fish are gonna do fine. Everything from the temperature to the water quality and the light and everything about the fish's growing system is controllable by us. Whereas if you're doing a cage or flow through or ponds, there's a lot of reliance on the weather to cooperate or the climate or whatever body of water you're working out of. Whereas here we have complete control over that limited really only by the equipment we're willing to use. We don't want to grow a fish in here that's going to have a hard time, that's going to have issues, right? So Pompano foots the bill in the sense that it's very durable, they're a schooling fish, and they're a smaller fish to begin with. So your production scale and your size in terms of the systems you have to build can be a little smaller to begin with. So those factors combined even with the limited amount of research on commercial production, make it an appealing species. Over the past 10 months, the team has been working hard to raise these fish to get them to the point where they're ready to be harvested. Every Monday morning, the team preps for harvest and the amount that's harvested depends on the orders for the week. The first step of the process is to net the fish into an ice bath. Because pompano are warm water fish, the ice bath kills them quickly. They're then divided by size, from around a pound to a pound and a quarter. Aquaco has harvested and sold thousands of fish, and this is the only land-based pompano farm in the country. The farm sells to wholesalers who distribute the fish to local markets and sometimes sells directly to restaurants. On average, seafood travels 5,000 miles to get to your plate. Today, we follow these fish to cotton capers, only 57 miles away. Here at Cotton Capers, Steve's crew fillets the fish before sending them out to a restaurant down the street. He also sells them whole in the retail side of the market. This fish could be on your dinner plate within days of harvest. Pompano is a more popular fish in the southeast of the Gulf of Mexico. That's where its range is. For the last 20 years, there's not been enough of the wild pompano to go around for the demand. Farmy's product is wonderful in the, its ability to have a, a, a steady price, very little fluctuation in cost on it. Availability is usually very steady. We hear so often is uh, a comment like, uh, don't want anything that's not wild. We only, we, that's all we eat. We don't eat any farm seafood. And honestly, in our diets, seafood is the only thing that's still hunted and gathered. All other products that we eat as a society are farmed. So why not eat farm fish? The increase in demand for Good quality seafood every year seems to go up and up and up. As our population has grown, we don't have the resources of the wild fish to fill the demand. We must augment the supply of fresh fish with farm fish. We have the technology, we could easily outfish all of the oceans in the, in the sea. What you see behind us I hate to say, but just costs a lot of money to grow. You know, if you want a sustainable product raised on land, not hurting our environment, we have to produce a fish that also has a return that makes us viable. 
here in the U.S., there's literally only a handful of places you can go and, and see it done. So there's a little pioneering left to do in this industry. What we built a few years ago is a great proof of concept, right? When you're doing a novel species like Pompano, there's so much still to learn. And so kudos to the whole team. This is what they've done and, and kind of say perfected the craft of Florida Pompano at this scale, but we need to grow it. Probably the biggest thing for us is just, is hiring the right people. Yes, it's manufacturing and yes, a lot of equipment does work for us here at the farm, but it's still just the hands-on knowledge and eyes and trust. You gotta be able to know that when you left the night before, someone's coming in the next morning and picking up where you left off. I grew up here in Florida. I'd catch the fish off the beaches where I grew up near Singer Island all the time. And it's a good tasting fish. We've had chefs rave about it. The limiting factor with Pompano is it has a very small wild caught season. And so what we're able to do is that fill that calendar 12 months out of the year and get it from being a Friday night or Saturday night special and become a regular plate menu item. So yeah, here we have our awesome. local Florida Pompano fish and chips. Cool, yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, of course. So us here at Stodge, we pride ourselves in using local fresh ingredients, high quality, and uh, working with and partnering with Aquaco Farms, every Pompano we get in is perfect. Yeah? We, awesome. get, we, we just can't say anything less, but professional. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, this guy came out of the water yesterday, so I bet it's going to be awesome. Uh, super fresh, super crispy. Cool. Awesome. Well, amazing job. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy, okay? Thanks. Well, thank you. Thanks, Chef. Should we uh, try, try this? Yes, please. All right. Dive in. I'm going to grab a little piece here. These types of farms face many challenges in an effort to bring sustainably grown seafood to a local market. Right now, these types of farms are rare, but they deserve our attention and support.